thank you for nice introduction. And today I'm going to talk to the characteristic of the, uh, this co-planner Sylvester Junction. Oh. B. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, um, this is the new Josephson Junction and with the magnetite uh, tunnel barrier. And actually we expect to see the pi junction characteristic in, in this, uh, from this Josephson Junction. And actually what we, this is the ongoing uh, project. We started the one and a half year ago. And, right, and today I'm going to show the, the synthesis and also characterization of these uh, old films and also uh, the electric characterization of the, this Josephson Junction. Okay, let me start with uh, my motivation. Actually, recently uh, we work on this uh, superconductor, which is the iron arsenic uh, superconductor. You can, and we substitute this rubidium with the europium, and we observe that this, this guy shows some magnetic behavior in this direction, and another magnetic layer here, and this is the another magnetic layer in this direction. This is the really nice Josephson Junction, but unfortunately this one doesn't show the, the Josephson Junction behavior. And, and if you look, the, uh, this is the uh, a specific heat capacitance, and there's a two peaks. One is uh, corresponding to superconductivity, the other one is corresponding to this magnetism, uh, but these are, and if you look, this is the and antiferromagnetic, it's not antiferromagnetic, but the uh, this line is shows the, this and this oriented to this one and total magnetic uh, magnetization is zero. And now the, okay, these are the, we just measure it and let's, this is the, our motivation. Let me just uh, uh, start the, the, give the, the brief introduction about the, the ferromagnetic uh, junction. And we just, uh, this one is if you put to the uh, superconduct, uh, the paramagnetic layer between the two superconductors, and it gives you the more physics. And these are the odd frequency pairing and FFLO pairing and pi junction characteristic, long range, equal spin current, and, and also the proximity effect. And this one is, actually this one is very useful for to, to motivate uh, for the, the uh, quantum computing to modify the or for uh, phase shift in of the qubit. The other one is the presence of the uh, spin triplet supercurrent, as it's really useful for superconducting uh, spintronic applications. And I, I think this our purpose is first of all we we want to just mix design of this one, and these are our pi junction to to control. The, the this uh, the qubit uh, structure and like this one is behave as a the phase shifter and now the and then we we want to modify this uh, phase shift by applying a magnetic field. Okay, and actually in the, the literature and if you increase the, the voltage jump and they put the insulating layer, but this one and there is a, some quasi particle excitation because of this uh, metallic layer. And then also we want to increase the, the ju junction voltage and how we can put the paramagnetic insulator between the two superconducting uh, layers. And these are the just the tick, and we want to just look to the uh, signature of the, the pi junction, and these are just the uh, thickness induced the zero and pi junction transition and cost structure in the temperature depends on the critical current for an hover pattern or also change in the RN product. And these are the, okay, these are the just the application and spintronic and also the superconducting qubit. Actually, our purpose is go towards the, the superconducting qubit applications. And actually, I want to summarize it uh, today in the morning section and you also uh, briefly uh, summarize it. We are our purpose to, to get the ferromagnetic insulating uh, layer between the two superconductors to observe the pi junction characteristic. First of all, we want to see the, this the cost, cost structure and uh, in the uh, as a function of the, the uh, barrier thickness. And the other one is also the cost structure 
and critical current change is a function of the temperature, the other one the front hover patterns. And this one is actually is well known effect if this is the proximity effect and if you increase the thickness of the magnet magnetic layer and the superconductivity suppressed and you, these are the just uh, you can I also put this uh, plot here. And these are the okay magnetic insulator and people always is uh, working these uh, paramagnetic insulator but we prefer to uh, to uh, to form the magnet magnetite structure in the in the between the structure this one is very promising candidate and for spintronic application and these are the high unique electrical characterization also magnetic properties high curve temperature and high spin polarization and it also shows us uh, the very transition around 120 Kelvin. This is a structural uh, phase transition, gives to you some kind of to the phase transition from the, the semi-metal to insulator, insulating phase. And these are the just our how to grow the, our films, and we use the AJ uh, sputtering uh, system in the Boston University. And these are the magnetic stages to, to focus to, uh, the. Uh, plasma towards the, this uh, 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 stage, and these are you can see the TM feature of the, the our junction stack, and these are this, our uh, junction is around here, and and also we uh, look the topology of the niobium and also uh, the iron oxide layer on the top of the niobium, and it's li really the roughness is less than the one nanometer. And these are just the Sunum facility in at uh, Sabancı University, and we can also we can fabricate the nano uh, scale size devices, also microwave uh, devices, and also the wafer size uh, devices. You can see, and we have a uh, two uh, cryogenic system. One is the Tesla-Tron, and the other one is the uh, dilution fridges, and one is uh, we can also go to the uh, up to the 1.5 Kelvin, and we can apply the, the uh, eight Tesla, and this one is more useful, and we can go to the down to the 10 milli Kelvin, and also we can apply the 12 uh, the Tesla magnetic field, and we have also have the, this one, but we couldn't implement that this device, but it's really ready, and this is that we can do the angular dependence of the magnetic resistance measurement by the this. And uh, you can see the, our uh, sample design. One is that we can use the top to bottom fabrication method. And why we prefer this one, I will tell you. And this, today I'm going to talk the, this, this uh, show the, the electrical uh, measurement of the co-planar Josephine junction and we fabricate it by EBL structure. And actually I want to talk, okay, we are uh, starting at the beginning and right now we have to solve the some problem. One, one problem is the niobium oxide on the niobium, and uh, you can see the niobium pentoxide or niobium dioxide is also uh, present in the, in the on the top, and also you can see that this oxide structure at the top of the, the niobium, and we this is the reason why we use the tap cap layer, and these are the just the niobium films, and we just grow on the MGO and uh, sapphire substrate and with the different power and also we just uh, optimize the sputtering condition to get really superconducting films actually and it's really grow on the MGO subset and it gives the high TC superconducting state and actually there's a some some problem maybe there is some uh, uh, but definitely I can just show you here and you can see that the boundaries of this uh, upper critical uh, current on the, M this is the niobium on the sapphire, this is the niobium on the MGO subset, and the critical, uh, the upper critical value is, is around 7.7 .7 Tesla and on the niobium, uh, for niobium on the, uh, the MGO subset. Okay, now that we need to also optimize the, uh, the spotting condition to get the exactly true magnetite crystalline structure on the niobium. First, we just grow it on the MGO subset to how to, actually our purpose is epitaxial Josephine junction. First of all, we want to, uh, uh, to get the epitaxial films and it's easy to put to some kind of the 
uh, the epitaxial film or crystalline structure. And then we can also put the another one is like this. And our purpose is to get to the crystalline form of the iron oxide layer, which should be uh, uh, magnetite. And we also, we need, uh, this one is help us to avoid the disorder bonds or the defect in the tunneling barrier. This is very important for the coherent. And actually we, fo we found some parameter and I, I don't want to go to the details of the XPS result. And, and simply I can say that this, this ratio between the iron three uh, and iron uh, plus two ions, this ratio is very is, uh, close to, uh, to, to, to literature value. And it's, it's tell us the period of the magnetite phase, but the XRD is telling the different. In, if you look at the XRD and we have a magnetite and hematite phase uh, present in, in, in our structure. And you can see the transport characteristic of the coplanar junction is a coplanar junction. And TC is shows the two steps and most probably upper and the, the lower uh, films shows the different superconductivity. And this, you can see the, the IV characteristic of the, this, this junction. And, and also we looked at the temperature dependence of the critical, critical current density. Actually it shows the, Umbilical Barato uh, relation. Somehow, it's there is a some some little bit cusp. Uh, we are not sure. We have to be because uh, thickness should be very important for the, this. Uh, this guy has a six nanometer uh, the iron oxide layer. I am not telling that this is a magnetite, but definitely this is the iron oxide layer. And you can also, this is the front hover pattern of the, the structure. And you can see here, this is the, uh, the um, IV characteristic of the, uh, the, the coplanar junction under the magnetic field. Magnetic field is applied in this direction. Actu actually, this was, uh, we, we couldn't expect some front hover pattern because the, we, all, we apply the magnetic field in this direction, not parallel to the, uh, the uh, the tunneling barrier. And then we observed uh, some kind of the front hover like pattern-like behavior. And it shows uh, like this. But in your, in your uh, the talk, and it's, there's a, this peak is shifted to the negative side as I remember. And ours is, is like this. And uh, of course we, uh, we also uh, repeat it and we are re really getting the, this kind of the, the front hover pattern. Most probably, let me go back this this shape, and and yeah, maybe, and this one is this uh, this part is is upper part of the niobium. That means that the this guy is covered uh, like this, and we have a Josephson junction in this side here, here, and at the later uh, the uh, the. Uh, size of the, the, this uh, film. And maybe this one is, is really parallel to the magnetic field and then we got, we got to this uh, front over pattern. We don't know, actually this is not my design. This is, they changed this design accidentally, we got it. And now, and now the, this is the last result and this is the ma uh, front over pattern of the one of the mesa array, which is the, around the 500. 500 nanometer size, and these are IV characteristic of this one. Unfortunately, and we always is getting the, this kind, uh, the low TC, and we try to, to figure out why the, the TC is decreasing. Maybe this is the over edge of the, this, uh, this structure, or magnetite is, is decreased, the magnetite layer is decreased the TC, and uh, we don't know what the, Exactly, this is the front hover pattern or critical current, how to oscillate with the, uh, the magnetic field. And we apply the magnetic field and this perpendicular to this. Uh, and then we got the, again the same and some kind of the uh, front hover pattern, but we are not sure. We are open to discuss. Uh, we, we, we will be happy to, to discuss it. And this is the my summary. And okay, we optimize all condition to get to this uh, uh, pi junction structure characteristic. And we just still going on. And 
optimization of the uh, deposition condition to get the true magnetite uh, structure also. This is our future work, and we want to just uh, uh, grow the series of the Josephson junction and uh, with gradually varying the, the thickness of the iron oxide layer and to look at this uh, signature of the, uh, the pi junction characteristic. Thank you very much. Ah, by the way, these are the my group, and is we are in, and we just, uh, we are, I just uh, showed the result of today, and also I'm, uh, we are growing the high PC superconducting films and for terahertz emission. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so we have time for questions, comments. Yes, please. Thank you for the interesting talk. Um, I have a question. Did you have any evidence that the barrier is magnetic? <laughs> yeah, Actu actually we just looked at the XRD result. Is it magnetic? And uh, we also looked at the VSM, but we couldn't take the very uh, the weak signal. And uh, right now, is we try to, to understand, okay, electrical measurement maybe give us the, the maybe uh, the signature of the, this uh, this behavior, mm -hmm. and of course it needs to some kind of the uh, advanced uh, analyzing uh, to for like the squid maybe it uh -huh. may be useful. Uh, VSM is, is cannot give give us the, this transition or magnetic behavior. Definitely. Ah, I'm sorry. Uh, VSM uh, tell us, uh, okay, there, there's, it's a uh, magnetic layer, and us, but we couldn't observe the, this very, very transition. Very, very transition, very special case for magnetite. Okay. And how about, <coughs> how about the conducting state? Uh, do you, I mean, do you have evidence whether it is insulating or metallic? It shows the metallic. Some kind of, because I am, I'm just looking to this, uh, the voltage jump is, is what I expect, it's, I, I, uh, I expect the really million uh, volt range, but it gives the nano volt, something like this. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, is there a reason why you choose MGO as a substrate? Uh, actually, we t try to, to uh, optimize the parameter on the different substrates, silicon and sapphire and MGO. And in the literature tell us, okay, it's really growing the very well on the MGO. And also uh, magnetite can also grow well on the MGO substrate. And we, we looked, okay, TC is, is really uh, high. It's close to nine Kelvin. And uh, also it shows some crystalline structure. And then it's okay for, for us. And for silicon, and we just observe that the TC is down to six Kelvin. I, I don't know, maybe uh, because of the, our uh, uh, deposition condition. I'm not sure. Okay, just in the uh, for the thin film? Yes, for the thin film to get it. How, how thick was the film? Uh, film, 100, 150. 150 mm. on one layer. Okay. And second layer is also 150, yeah. and we have our iron oxide layer. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there uh, any other question? So if not, let's thank the speaker again. And I'm, I'm glad to, to give you this Thank certificate. You.